God bless you. Welcome to Let's Cross Together with yours truly, the mental health pastor, Fernando Kittrell. And this is day number nine, day number nine of the Better Is Possible Challenge. And uh, thank God for you tuning in. And before I even get started, share this, share these videos uh, and together that's how we change lives. All right. So day number nine uh, in this 30 day challenge. Happy New Year. Happy 2024 to you. May God's blessings be on you as you continue and pursue purpose and uh, on this journey of faith. Well, today I want to talk to you about come back from setback. Come back from setback. If you are like me, you've experienced some setbacks in life. You've experienced some things that didn't go your way. You've experienced some things that I don't know, just, just went haywire. And it's, that, it's during that time that uh, it's revealed what's really in us. Do we quit? Do we reset? Do we retreat? Do we give up? You know, it's doing that heartbreak is, is, is what really reveals what's, you know, if we really believe that we still can do it. Because many times setback kind of reveals that we wasn't we were not serious anyway and so um, I've had some setbacks I've had some foul ups bloopers whatever you want to call them I have experienced them and I uh, had to learn a lot of things through those lessons some I caused in life and some I didn't it just happened the circumstances in life but God was still with me and he was still faithful. And so if God has put a purpose in you, if God has put a burning desire for a direction for your life, for a purpose, for uh, 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 a position somewhere or whatever he's putting you to do or to accomplish, rest assured that it doesn't matter how much you mess up, you are still called to do it. And sometimes we think because we did something that we shouldn't have done, we disqualify ourselves and we step back, uh, step back from purpose, step back from uh, obeying God, step back from that burning desire that's in our heart. But I want to encourage you today that whatever God has put in your heart to do, it doesn't leave because you do something you shouldn't do. It doesn't. God's purpose is bigger than our mistake. God's purpose is still bigger than our sin. Well, let me say this. Ephesians, uh, the third chapter talks about, well, a Paul is praying. He's praying around the 17th, 18th and 19th chapter. He's praying that, that the, the church, that the, the brethren at, at, at Ephesus and the church at, at Ephesus, he said, I pray you comprehend with all the saints. What is the depth? What is the width? What is the length? And what is the height of God's love? So I believe God wants to reveal himself to us his love in such a way that it overwhelms us uh, uh, and provokes obedience beyond our setback. Many times when we experience setback, what we do is attribute, somehow we think, well, God doesn't love me because we have a, maybe a limited view of what his love is and what it does and what it's capable of. So praise God. So anyway, come back from setback. Uh, there are three things that I've learned um, as, as it relates to setback, three principles that I use. Uh, I, you know, I try my best to use these, but, I, but, you know, I've been heartbroken. I've been had dreams shattered, thought I should have had things but didn't. So, you know, and I'm sure you have too. We all have a story. We all have situations that we can rehearse. But I believe God doesn't want us to quit. God doesn't want setback uh, to be a detour and then we create something else and want God to bless. I believe that even though we've experienced setback, we can align ourselves again to purpose and to wisdom and accountability and direction and get back into divine alignment to God's will for our life. So these are three things that I want to challenge you with. I want to encourage you with. And let me say this too. 
uh, and, and you probably hear me say this on other videos and a lot, you know, I believe sometimes, and I've seen it, I've seen, I've seen it in my life until I understood that uh, sometimes it, it, it is doing the same thing over and over. Sometimes we think it's mundane and is boring, but, uh, but God, God will ignite us even in a routine that seems boring. He will uh, give us joy in the midst of it. And I say all that, say all of that to say this, sometimes we graduate ourselves out of the process before we see the results. And because we, we, get, we, we think we should have something at a certain point in this process, we'll jump out and just uh, create it and then wind up making a mess. And so you never graduate from the process. You never graduate before it's time. And sometimes it is boring doing the routine, doing the same things over and over. But that's what it is. That's what this this walk of faith is. There are times where we continue to do the right thing until uh, the right thing happens. All right. So these are three things that I usually do. Uh, excuse me. Three things that I have, uh, well, usually do or res resort back to when I'm, when I've experienced setback in something that really maybe rock my emotions a little. So 2024, you can uh, come back from setback. 2023 is over, so we, we can't look to that any anymore. What we can look to in 2023, I should say 2023, we can look to the lessons learned. And that's really point number one, identify lessons learned. Every setback has has lessons learned. Every disappointment has wisdom that we can glean out of the circumstance, whether we caused it, whether someone else caused it, uh, whatever. But there are still lessons learned. God does not waste pain. Pain is never wasted in the hands of God. So whatever uh, you might say, well, it was their fault and they caused me to have this and they caused my life to be this way. Well, find out, sit still reflect, pray. What is the lesson learned? There is a lesson in everything. There is a lesson when there is a messing. Does, do y'all hear anything in that? So no matter who caused it, how it happened, find out what is the lesson learned? Because when you move forward, you're going to have to move forward with new instructions or maybe the same instructions, but you approach it things differently. Sometimes it's the same thing the same situation that you're going to have to overcome. But this time you got lessons learned. You got insights. You got wisdom. You got direction. So find out uh, what I normally do is write down um, journal, if you will. Okay, what are some things I learned out of this heartache, out of this pain? What can I glean from? Identify lessons learned. And then point number two, this is really good here. This is what I have to do all the time and i when i first started uh counseling and coaching this is this this um what is called smart goals these are goals that i learned and these help keep me accountable and help govern me they help govern me uh my my decisions and my direction and so smart goals i don't know if you've heard of this smart but but smart it's spelled SMART, but it's an, it's an acronym that means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. These set of instructions help keep us focused and, and actually being true to ourselves. So these are what is called SMART goals. SMART goals. In other words, uh, when you're moving forward into planning something or designed to fulfill a purpose or a calling of God or whatever it is, uh, this is a great way to stay in alignment to it and to be realistic and be true to yourself to uh, the situation at hand or the goals at hand. And so SMART stands for, again, specific. What is the specific thing that you want to do or you're trying to accomplish? In other words, narrow it down to specifics. What is it? Next is it measurable? How can you measure when you've uh, accomplished it? Uh, 
you know, what are the benchmarks? What are the measuring points? Can, can this be measured to fulfillment, need, need improvement, et cetera? And then is it attainable? Sometimes we, we're more ambitious than we are real and, <laughs> and relevant about the, uh, what the, uh, the uh, situation at hand or the goal. Sometimes we have astronomical things from ambition, but sometimes you got to start off with what is this attainable? And, you know, is it measurable? And then is it realistic? Because sometimes I've done it. I've chased things that was beyond really what God had for me and it created a frustration. So is it attainable? Then my second point, uh, fourth point, as I said, is it realistic? Is it is this really realistic? Somebody at 78. Uh, I don't know, 78 and you still you're trying to train to be pro football player. I don't think that's going to work. It's just, that's just not realistic. And so, um, then timely, what is the time frame? What is how, you know, measuring also has, okay, what, what length of time does this have to take place? So these are smart goals. And then I'm, I'm just tapping on it a little bit, but I want you to further look into this, uh, on your own. I'm just sparking your interest, hopefully, um, as a point to know that you can come back from setback. And then number three is really the part that people struggle with is uh, get accountability partners. Get people around you that you can be accountable to. Get people around you that are already past what you're trying to accomplish. So seek persons to help you to be accountable so you can have a successful comeback. All right. So identify lessons learned, number one. Number two, set smart goals. Uh, seek persons to help you be accountable so you can be forward. And most importantly, that this covers every over all these three is pray and continue to seek the Lord and, and his wisdom and guidance. And he'll direct you to, to do all these uh, specific points. So I appreciate you. This is day number nine of the Better Is Possible uh, challenge. I believe in you. Most importantly, God has called you to it. He, he, you're capable and he knows that you can do it. So 2024, we can come back from setback. God bless you.